Hello. Beep, 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 beep. Hey, Elijah. How the hell are you, bud? Oh, doing fine, doing fine. Oh, doing fine. How was your sessions this morning? I take it you had multiple sessions? Well, actually, um, you know, it's almost full moon. There seems to be a bit of craziness in the land. Oh, yes. Tonight's full moon, isn't it? Something like that. It was 7.30 this morning was, or I don't know. <laughs> My witchy moon calendar says it was 7.30 this morning, 7.15 this morning, so right on. I, I think there's reason to feel a little bit of angst. Yeah. So I got some wonderful news for you. Uh, <laughs> Lost my other Weebly. No. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't. It's turning out fantastico. I know. Sorry, that was unfair. I, I take it back. Positive. Yeah, I did. I didn't believe you. I know. I didn't have the same emotional uh, magnitude that I had yesterday. I was just near exploding. Well, fuck. You had good reason. But I have made some progress as I've been steadily chipping away at it. A little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. Uh huh. And uh, we'll screen share tonight. What I want to talk to you about, because to me, you are the most active person in this because everyone else has just said they're going to help. And you've actually helped. And then everyone else had plenty of chances. Like, hey, what can I do? Can I help you write stuff? That is, and no one's offered anything but you. And so from my perspective, it's like if anyone's getting remuneration in my mind at this time, you're first and foremost, right? Because your efforts should be, you know, concluded with or should be uh, awarded or, or, or appreciated with some sort of adequate remuneration for your time. However, my buddy Christian, when I asked him, you know, to, to do some research and find out how it would cost, how much it would cost to make me a video for my web page, he did in fact do some research and came back with the number 40K. <laughs> I was like, well, you know, Elijah with a digital camera and a microphone could probably do that for much cheaper. <laughs> a whole fuck of a lot cheaper, actually. But, uh, you know, thanks for finding that out it's five thousand bucks a, or one thousand dollars a minute basically or some shit i fucking forget how it works yeah i mean there's a high budget medium budget low budget but i'm used to the uh often no budget. no budget yeah. <laughs> or the even the econo budget i'm paying you in weed <laughs> weed and odd kitchen utensils and what i pay you to do it that's <laughs> such a bad businessman. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, the video thing I told him, to, let's go back to the drawing board, see if we can find a more economical, uh, viable uh, solution to said fucking dilemma. Or be great. You know, in the end, I'll just record it on my phone. It won't cost me fuck all. Like, I already paid for this thing outright. So, <laughs> I mean, we can change it as we go, as money starts flowing and 40 grand for a video becomes a possibility. But Currently, you know, I'm, I'm not in that. Uh, arena. Perhaps you misunderstood me. <laughs> well, we have to get like studio actors and we have to get all the gear and we have to get. Yeah, like, uh, well, just because he's in an audiovisual course in Vancouver right now, right? Mm. And so he went, must have gone to his instructors to ask and as well, professional video shoot, blah, blah, blah. You know, everyone else is trying to get theirs. Uh, the reason I'm calling you is because I'm trying to prepare somewhat of a, well, I don't know, presentation for this evening as I have no fucking clue what I'm doing. Except, hey guys, thanks for showing up. Okay, bye. <laughs> you know, like, that's as far as I've got so far. And with you telling me, well, you know, it is your thing, so you got to be the guy. I'm kind of like, ah. Well, I no, I mean, that's, stuff. that's not... Know. That's not what true. What I've done so far is I got Morris to say an opening prayer for us and asked him if he would do that. If, if I could see him, I would give him tobacco or a blanket or something for his efforts and, 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 and show respect. But I did ask him, he said, no problem. So he's going to do, basically, we're going to do a quick introduction 
of everyone in the group so everyone's familiar with each other and you make introductions. I'll give a quick little spiel and, and, and thank Morris for his time and everything. Morris says an opening prayer so that we're all coming from street mind into the mind of what we're trying to do here. And then I'll do an opening spiel about a little bit of what I'm trying to do and, and what the overall goal is. And the reason I'm mentioning this to you is because what I'm trying to prevent is I don't want <clears throat> other more zealous individuals to kind of take over and, and start running everything as, as I believe they will tend to do. And uh, my friends will see right through it, right? So I just kind of don't want to freak anyone out or push. You know what I'm saying? I, I kind of want them to do a bit of a soft open and not just, you know, like, I'm mad, I'm the most amazing guy in the world. I'm going to tell you what to do. Like, it's, that's not going to work very well. So hopefully if I can get the format somewhat out there, we can kind of start, because as of today, I want people to kind of leave with a sense of knowing what the hell I'm trying to do. And with uh, a sense of what they can do to kind of contribute what they feel comfortable or willing to do, given that the understanding is, and, 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 and you know, this includes you somewhat, is everything's kind of pro bono until we get the Kickstarter and funds starting to come in. Once funds start going in, I have to account for every fucking penny, the accounting of it all, like it all goes, whoever's getting paid X amount of hours, X amount, of, you know what I'm saying? Like that kind of a thing. It's not just someone wanted 10K, so I sent him 10K for his efforts. It can't be like that because I have to, uh, this week and next week is literally the worst classes for me because it's all accounting, spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet. And I hate the shit. I've got numerical dyslexia. So last night I was like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. I kept saying that like multiple times. Are you okay, James? Are you, good? Are you following along? I'm like, ah, sure. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, Literally, like, you might as well have just been speaking to me and fucking Enochian or something for all the good it did. I was like, eh. I made a joke about numerical dyslexia and got a big ha 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 from everyone, but it's actually kind of true. And then my buddy Tom's like, actually, you know, you can you can contract most of your accounting shit out, so don't worry about it, blah, blah, blah. But then the guy keeps asking us questions and mini tests and stuff. So I'm kind of like, well, you know, I don't know what the fuck. I have no answers for any of his questions. So I'm just kind of like, turn my video and sound off and just coast through for the next two weeks and just you know because <laughs> it really is beyond my I can't like I can I it was hard enough me learning the computer stuff but I, with your help I was I was able to navigate some of it but as soon as it comes to like numbers and columns and adding up and subtracting and looking at cost factors I can't like I just it literally my brain has a block well what we could do is we could do the same thing as we did with the website. We could get the spreadsheet there in front of you. Mm -hmm. And I could just take you through some basics. Or someone and, else can kind of take up some of that in the beginning. If that's their forte's math or accounting, they might take that up. And all I have to do is send them numbers and stuff like that. Like the responsibility of the Kickstarter account. I, I, I want to have kick. I want to have checks and balances mm -hmm. as in money can go into the account that I'll end up creating and, and I'll take your advice on who I should go with as far as a business account goes. But then once, what I want to do is money can be deposited, no problem from anyone from any source, but any withdrawals require the signature of at least three board members. It has to be that way because there's going to be accountability issues and shit. And it just has to be now that's not counts accounts, payable stuff, right? That stuff automatically goes up. I mean, any type of payments to this, that, or the other thing all has to have three signatures to make it happen, at least in the beginning. Because I have to be able to show transparency in every stage. You have to understand, like, because I'm the funding that I'm going to be going, they're one going to they're going to want to see my records. They're going to want to see all the fucking every single dollar and penny accounted for. There can't be oh two cents. I can't find must have gone. You know what I'm saying? Like nothing. You know how, how they are about that shit. So all my ducks have to be in a row. And well, I would suggest this, that I think still that it, you have to start to got to understand the basics of Excel mm -hmm. and the basics of sort of like money in, money out. Yeah. And, and not to let, I mean, accounting can get pretty complicated with all their different kind of uh, terms. The language, man. But it's, it's pretty basic. I mean, it's Income basically statements, like retained earnings and balance sheets. You know, yeah. that's what we're learning. Assets, liabilities, revenue, equity, and expenses, right? 
all these kind of words. So I am learning some of it, right? Like what is a liability? What's an equity, blah, blah, blah. Balance sheet, income statements and blah, blah, blah. So I am learning some of that. But when it comes to like the, the little tests he does of like the adding <laughs> up columns, I just say, like, you know, like, eh. so that's not, well, that's, and that's, I will focus on, like, I just can't, I'm not going to make myself do something I'm just not able to do. Right, but, but you weren't able to do the website I showed you. And then once I yeah, yeah, well, that you, wasn't a warrant. It's just I didn't know. This one is I literally have a learning disability for mathematics, and it okay. was severely well, fucking traumatized. Like if I could explain it to you, you wouldn't joke around. It's not funny. Like I have serious trauma on math. I get you. But, so I'm, right. I'm like, that's just not my forte. Okay. But I want to be able to put people who might trust in positions where that I don't have to worry. And if I decide to check in, I could do a spontaneous, hey, let's sit down and look at the numbers. They're going to be able to explain it to me and show me that I'll be able to see no problem and understand. After about four or five of those meetings, I should be able to be, okay, let's see the numbers and understand fully when they take me through it. Right. You know what I mean? Because that's kind of what I'm looking at. But it's, it's at first I want someone who's going to take over the accounting and then they're going to be the head of accounting. So when we get a contracting firm out for our accounting, that person's going to check the accounting firm's number. I'm going to check their numbers. With, you know what I'm saying? Like it's a, Is any one of the people in that group like an accountant? I don't think so yet. But I, I truly believe that if we get going and whatnot and i put the call out for certain things i'm going to get responses like i'm going to be able to yeah of course you know, there's someone will come forth and say i really like what you guys are trying to do i'm a fucking cpa or, or cga or whatever the case is and i uh, have no problem with working with you guys in the beginning because whoever helps me in the beginning and starts to actually make traction with stuff well when it comes down to actually forming the corporation guess who's the head of that division <laughs> you know what i'm saying like that's pretty much how i'm gonna fucking see it if they want to that is you know i'm assuming anyone who's on board tonight's call wants to be involved so this is your chance to kind of figure out what what skills are you bringing forward and and, and that whole thing you know so i'm just trying to tighten up my presentation tonight because i don't want to sound like justin trudeau uh 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 and anyways uh uh uh, uh really good stuff uh uh, uh. <laughs> you know I mean? <laughs> have you ever run your own business I used to sell crack. <laughs> I was a pimp at one time and I so sold yeah. weed. <laughs> so yeah, that counts. I was a middleman. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, I'm not joking around. That that's actually true. <laughs> that's my experience in, in that world. So, like me, you know, I don't want you to like misunderstand me here. All I have is a great idea. And the ability to bullshit baffled brains. <laughs> and that's my skill set that I'm bringing forward. <laughs> what? You need more skills than that? <laughs> right? Oh, my God. <laughs> I got my desk. It's like Homer when he sets up his uh, computer company. He's got his yeah. desk. Yeah. Well, he's got his phone. So, yeah, it's just tonight I want to do, I want to keep it kind of informal with the understanding that future meetings will be more formal. You know what I mean? Like we won't record this first session, but the next ones will be recorded. And that the understanding of that, that once you take on, once you agree in front of everyone, because this is just like Sundance, you say in front of everyone, how many years you're committing to the Sundance. And so it's not only your word you have to keep to yourself. you got to keep your word with these other Sundancers and elders. You know what I mean? If you said four years, it's four years. Same thing, if you said you're gonna take on certain responsibilities, I'm going under the, the understanding that that's, you're, you're gonna be a person of your word and you're taking those things on, right? Why, why don't you want to film for the first one? Because of the prayer and the fact that introductions and some people may not be here and, and so <coughs> forth. And I always believe that introductions should be kind of off the, okay. off the Thing, you know what I mean? But once the next, with the understanding, the very next meeting is going to be more official. It's going to be more formatted. It's going to be more whatever. And I think Matt will probably be the guy who, between you and him, help kind of like shape that, what it would look like and stuff like that. You know what I mean? <clears throat> because you, you know Matt, right? That's one of his skill sets is, is that kind of stuff too. So, you know, trying to find a way to get you guys to work together towards the common goal without bumping heads or like stepping on toes or anything 
that's kind of the thing, right? Because you both have unique and different ways of going about it. But you know, I I just I kind of feel like I, I I trust you more with this stuff because I know you know what you're talking about. But I don't want to put too much on your shoulders at the same time, right? I don't want you to be taking on more because you have a lot on your plate too. So yeah, we'll we'll just see. Um... It's like even Morris, like Morris, I don't, uh, Morris might have, might be kind of like, if I could ask him, because I don't want to give him anything, but in that way, but basically if he could kind of help me find some ways around some of the legal language and legal terminology and, and working with the legal team should be able to go, because the two most important, the three most important is going to be legal, uh, uh, accounting and, and administrative. Those three are going to be key 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 positions to fill right? yeah and uh because i i don't want to start going on this and find out that i'm completely off to fucking lunch there's a bunch of legal fucking things i didn't consider and by the time i do consider them it just kiboshes the whole thing so legal is going to be important and when it comes to fundraising some of the first monies are going to have to go a to you b to legal and and an accountant because it's just, you know, I can't just get money into an account and just start like fucking, you know, living the high life and, and throw my bro's money. And then there's nothing for the company. You know what I mean? But everyone got their fucking money. But then there's nothing left to actually do anything for the company. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want that to be how. Oh, well, I mean, that's why you have a budget and you go for the budget and the budget is. Aster, you know, everything has its place. And then once we get going. That's where people are going to have to understand that there's like, I'm not just throwing away fucking money here. That it's, it's, it's based on effort put in and so forth. Do you know what I mean? And, and that how we figure that scale out, that's going to be the hard part. And there's going to be some maybe hurt feelings or pissed off people or whatever the case is, but I don't know how else to do it. You know, I, I, and especially in the beginning when we're not a corporation yet and I can't, you know, I don't have tax numbers and this, that, and the other fucking thing. If in the beginning they're like, okay, where did this fifteen thousand dollars go? It says here to expenses. Where did they go? Well, I gave five to so and so, and one thousand to each person, and and that kind of thing. And then each person of all of them, only one person really did anything. But I just gave you all thousand. But you know what I'm saying? Like it's I can't do that. For sure. So I'm also super intimidated, Elijah. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. This was just an idea, and now it's all of a sudden it's picking up steam and actually stuff's happening and i'm like eh, i don't know <laughs> so well, it, kind of like, it's a big step to go from by yourself to a team mm. and especially you're not sure about the team and you're not like say you got a bunch of money you're hiring people specifically for jobs this is a startup and this is a you know it's still um as you said an idea right so you know you just you just got to trust that you're going to make the right moves each step of the way. Mm. And that. What you know, that word you use trust? What does that mean? Well, okay. you have to trust yourself. You have to have, I mean, big part of confidence is, is having confidence. You're going to take this all the way. Mm. Independent of the, whatever setbacks, whatever fucking shit comes up. Cause it's, it's just like, there's so much bullshit in business. Mm. Right. And yeah. everyone, once you get the money, everyone wants that money. Yeah. And you're right. You know, people are, you know, it's, it's a crap shoot. Right. And the reason these people are showing up is because you've got, you know, years of relationships with these guys. I'm sure, you know, these guys aren't just randoms. These are like your closest allies who said yes. And Martin also, and Morris are my only randoms, to be honest with you. Morris, what's that? Morris and Marvin are the only two randoms and those come through you. Morris, I have no problem with. I love the guy. I just don't know how involved he's going to be and stuff like that or what, you know, what he could contribute. And Marvin seemed super gung-ho yesterday, but we only had like a 20-minute conversation whilst he was doing delivery. So it was kind of hard to, to get. Oh, so you did talk to him? Yeah, we did a quick Zoom. And then he uh, texted me later and said he really likes the whole thing and, 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 and whatnot. So he has some familiarity in those things. Did you invite him to tonight? Oh, you did. Oh, good. Gonna be there, yeah. So pretty much everyone except I think one person, Kevin John, won't be there. 
because he has a he's got a music teaching class tonight so he's going to do that because i think that gets him money in his pocket which i totally understand but the understanding was on the next scheduled meeting everyone really should make make it kind of thing if you're going to be asking money from me then you have to be willing to do your part too and that's half it's fucking showing up just like in kitchen <laughs> you know half the battle is just getting people to show up <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> But instead of like everyone, it could be left up as a standing question <laughs> where we kind of like put up three options of what's the next date for our next meeting. And then everyone kind of picks a date that works for them and we kind of go by consensus. I think you want to schedule weekly meeting or bi-weekly meeting because it's 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 tough to schedule this amount of people every like for new next meetings and stuff like that. It's you want to get something that's just every week, same time, and either weekly or bi-weekly. Weekly at the beginning to get people like on board, because bi-weekly there's a lot of room in between. Well, let's do Wednesdays then. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, go with go go with what you start with, and we can adjust it to see. Um, but yeah. Yeah, because I, I I'm going between my classes, right? So that this doesn't get in the way of the stuff that I'm doing that I'm gonna learn an inch to get this fucking thing off the ground, right? So so yeah, that's it. <laughs> in the beginning, like I don't this mean it, it could yeah, I'd like to say something to you where um <coughs> just as a background, yeah, and that's you know, I, I've had this idea that everyone I've ever met is gonna be linked into what I'm doing, and that idea has given me more sorrow and disappointment than nearly anything in my life mm -hmm. and i have this lifetime goal of helping 144 spiritual masters that's one of my lifetime goals and that's been another thing that's kind of like been a maybe not such a good goal <laughs> maybe <laughs> now that i think about it it's just like maybe you're not supposed maybe karma you're not supposed to help people with their shit <laughs> you're supposed to help yourself fuck it i'm turning this into a gold mining company <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it's it's uh anyway so I, I i just there's kind of like a, i guess i could be projecting here but there's like a a desire for your closest buddies to to be involved in your greatest vision right at least that's what i have yeah and it doesn't always turn out that way just yeah. just saying i'm aware of that like I, I my buddy shadow was one of those guys who kind of impressed that upon me that in all his years of starting vampire groups and safe satanic groups and left hand path groups and then my own experience with Rolling Thunder, and you would tell people, oh my God, that's so awesome. I want to fucking be involved. Well, we train every Sunday. Sunday after Sunday, no one would fucking show up. You know, I'd just be by myself training until people did start showing up, you know? And some of them still train today, like Nathaniel and, and, and people like that are still training today, 20 years later, you know? So it is, you know, I understand that relying on people is going to be the problem, right? And, and so in the beginning, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm offering my core group of friends a chance to be on board. If none of that pans out, nobody wants to, then I'll put it out to my friends list on Facebook and I'll go through this again. Well, then, no, but I, I, I would I would suggest maybe not that in just in terms of your second step. Uh, I think you should think in terms of professionals. Yeah. And uh, people that are actually suited for the jobs. Well, you know what I'm saying is, is, is I hear what you're saying, but some of my friends do have skill sets. Some of them have gone to school and college and this, that, and the other thing. Like my uh, Nathaniel Keene is in electrical uh, engineering and computer engineering. I told him the idea he wants on board. Well, that's going to be the guy, one of my main guys. Because when I told him about Trinity Systems, he's like, that's fucking incredible. I want to be part of that. So I told him in the beginning, this mother's hands is what's going to get us the funds to get the research for R&D for Trinity Systems. And you're going to be my main guy once you get your fucking thing done. You'll be the head. And then anyone else, you hire your own staff and so on and so forth. You're given a budget, blah, 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 blah. And so that's kind of what we're going to do is kind of <clears throat> looking, because this is the part I don't know, is the structure of a business. I'm hoping they'll, they'll teach us that soon. <clears throat> But by, basically, I've got things like administrative, accounting, you know, the maintenance or the, the technology kind of end of things, marketing, like the stuff that you showed me with the, with the thing, with the... Off holders. Yeah. 
And so that kind of thing, someone being able to take a folder and if no one can, finding someone or hiring someone who can. But I can't hire strangers until I have the ability to pay strangers because strangers aren't going to work for free. The 48 laws of power appeal to people's self-interest, not to their compassion, right? Mm. And that's just a fact. Even though this has a noble vision, doesn't mean people are always going to be on board with this vision, on board with this vision, especially given that this society is so apathetic and totally lacking in empathy that mostly it's going to be self-interested people who want to get on board. And if that's the case, you're in the wrong company. I suggest you go elsewhere. Do you know what I mean? Like the pay grade for this isn't going to be great because you're doing this understanding that the majority of the money is going to go to lower food for children. That's, that's it. It can't be, um, you know, this is going to be, you know what I mean? Like, it just can't be that. doesn't mean you're not going to be compensated for your time and efforts, but it's not going to be, you know, 40K for a fucking video kind of shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Where's the reasonableness in that? I'll buy you a fucking $100 fucking 4K camera from the pawn shop. <laughs> we can go from there, man. You know, like a Bluetooth speaker on my jacket and we're fucking off to the races, man. <laughs> well and that's like the thing about business is um you know some people are used to million dollar budgets and and a forty thousand uh, dollar uh video is is of course yeah right yeah but then, but then they get but then they get like high quality mm -hmm. you know they get something yeah and, i would totally uh, if we, top quality for 40 fucking game and for a half an hour fucking video oh yeah <laughs> Better be the best fucking movie I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The inflow matrix operating system. So essentially, mm -hmm. right? Here's the different pieces and parts of your business. Communication service interfacing marketing, search and management, research, infrastructure, learning resources, operations. Now, what would creativity be? Is that the Creativity is your product. So that would actually be your vertical farms. Okay. So what are you creating basically, right? Yeah. Synergy customer service. So that's who's working with our clients and who's working with our partners and that's stuff. All relationships. Yeah. Services. How service is different from creativity? Services would be kind of like the, the people that were working in the vertical farms, getting everything done. Mm -hmm. And sort of like if your client, let's say, is the reserve, mm -hmm. um, the services would be, let's say, delivering the food to the reserve. Mm -hmm. So the operations are all the stuff you're doing inside that that doesn't produce money. Services are your direct connection to the customer that produces money. Right. OK. And so um, interfacing and marketing, that's, you know, how you bring the product in your and all of your sort of interactions outside of the system. Mm -hmm. So you're sort of up there, steward of management. You're like directing it, making sure the agreements are made. And your infrastructure is basically all your pieces and parts that you put together to create it. And what about communication? Since that's right in the middle. So that's that's the one of the biggest pieces, right? That's like all the communication between these parts and then all the communication to the outside world. Right. So then that would be kind of, would there be a similarity between management and communication insofar as someone has to take the, the ability to work with all the different divisions and and channel that towards management? Well, yeah, I mean, like communication on the one hand would be your hard tech, which is your info tech, which is all of your hardware plus your software. Mm -hmm. And then you've got your, let's say, communication officer mm -hmm. who would be facilitating. It depends on, like, to me, this is a way to run your business. Mm -hmm. Like I'm suggesting that those file folders is, everything that you're learning you fit into this mm -hmm. okay and that you could actually have a person at each one of these so marketing would be social media and that kind of sort of thing or yep. would that be communication well it's a bit of both right i mean but it's mainly chris has mentioned his ability his willingness to kind of take on some of the social media responsibilities because that's his he's in a course for that right now Okay. And he's young and, and that's kind of his thing. So I have no problem with, with him doing it. And if other people 
want to text Chris with ideas or suggestions or stuff, he'd be the guy you would text for that. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. Before any official moves would make, Chris would check in with me and you to make sure that that's on board with what we're trying to do. Before anyone posts fucking anything anywhere, I'm sorry, got to check in with me first. For sure. And if you and I are the uh, we're the top management, you check in with me and Elijah. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of how I want to look at it, is that no one has the ability to just do shit on their own officially on the site or page or on behalf of the company until it's gone through us. So we yeah. Be able to, yeah, no problem. I have no problem with that. Or actually, could you go back and see if you could find a, a way to do it cheaper or more efficiently or something? Do you know what I mean? Like Chris's media thing, I definitely, you know, send them back to <laughs> well, And the thing about this, the, the, the media is... I don't suggest that anything would be happening until something was happening, right? Yeah, and that's it. I want to be able to have those systems in place. So once we actually have a building, we can start documenting that, taking pictures of it, posting it on inter- you know, this, that, and the other thing. That's what I'm looking for. Do you know what I mean? In the beginning, there's not going to be much to do for social media until I actually have the web page up. Well, the Got thing it, is, yeah, the, the, I guess there's something that comes to mind in terms of the story. And I think that you know, sometimes the story of what you're doing has more power than what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And the story of, let's say, bringing vertical farms to all the reserves, because mm-hmm. that's when you're going to get a lot of support. Yeah. But it's but it's like, do you do that as you're doing it? Mm-hmm. Or do you do that once you've done it? I think that's a big decision there, right? I think, yeah, part of it is declaring what you're going to do. And then the other part is walking your talk and and and, and kind of like, showing people the process of you walking your talk because there does have to be declaration. i there here's a need i've identified the need i've identified the ways and means that i think we can meet meet that need which is what the vertical farming is and then once all this once we actually have that core going we've got traction funds are coming in that's when we can start documenting our progress but up until this point, we, I don't have anything until I can start getting a quick Kickstarter page or grant proposals. And I won't learn grant proposals till next week. This week's, mar- it's all the accounting shit. Like I got to get through one more class of accounting. And then next week, it's all how to write grant proposals and so on and who to write them to. And here's a list of all the available, blah, blah, blah. And then it's going to be on me and you and Charles to write as many fucking grants as we can. It's literally going to be kind of a template and you just fill in the top part and the bottom part and sign it and off she fucking goes, you know what I mean? But I want as much fucking money as I can get without having to go to banks and shit because banks will get an interest in the company and therefore start dictating how things should be done and shit. And I don't want that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I haven't even decided if I'm going to be a corporation, a nonprofit, like incorporated. I don't know any of that shit yet. I haven't figured that part out you know so that's some i wanted to bounce off you because i haven't got to that part in the course yet but you know what do you think Nonprofit in the beginning and then incorporate as we go i know nonprofits have a lot of limitations around sort of profits that don't really make it being a business a sort of a good idea in my mind i mean i think that we were talking about those two canoes hmm. And having both and having, I think, uh, talking to Morris more and finding out, is there a way to do both Mm. in such a manner Mm. that it works in both kind of thing? Like, I think that's at least why I I saw him as being so valuable, because it isn't just what you're doing, it's how you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And, And to me, there's a, you know, I'm here with the way I am because I've got an operating system. Now, I've been with people before where they forget that that's why I'm there, and then they don't stick to the operating system or even try to learn it, and then to me, they fall apart because they don't have any structure, yeah. and, they, and they didn't really know when you bring more people in, things get very different quick, yeah. and it's your structure yeah. that dictates to the people how you're going to operate in this enterprise, mm-hmm. and so what I hear from you a lot is that, you know, there's a lot of sort of whether mistrust of losing control that as you bring people in, they're not going to listen to what you want. Right. And that's, you know, from a business point of view, I mean, you're the CEO and you you really shouldn't think about that. It's more, can they do (laughs) what needs to get done? 
are they going to walk their talk when they say they're going to do something? Are they going to do it? Can they do it? And if not, then I have to put the right people in the places before too much shit, you know, because it comes down to, and this is it, business and friendship. And, you know, I'm going to say this to you because you and I are we're, we're of similar vision here in that I understand the difference between the two. The only reason I'm offering my friends first is to see if any of their skill sets can contribute and if they be wanting to. If none of them do or can, then I will find and I will hire. But then that changes how, you know what I'm saying? Because I would never talk to my friends the way I would talk, not to being an ass or anything, but I'd be a little bit more stoic a little bit more whatever when it came to talking to strangers in a professional way than I would my friends where there's kind of like some brevity there there's a certain amount of understanding that I might be more willing to give friends but the only reason I'm doing my this first isn't I, I want you to understand this because the people who have signed up well, there's only eight of them they all have skill sets they're all amazing fucking people they're not just dummies that are stoners like hey man gonna get some free money bro like none of them are like that Every one of those guys is a warrior. Every one of them believes in what I'm trying to do and has believes that they might have skills that can contribute. So this opening call is to find out, suss out kind of what is your skills, you know, and give you time to think about what would you be bringing forward so that next week we start to talk about, okay, I've had a week to think about it. Here's what I'm willing to do. Here's what I think I can do. Here's my skills and, and what I'm willing to, uh, to offer. And if they're really willing to dedicate, then by next week, we'll know who's on board and who's not, because you've had a week to think about it. And if you agree to it, then you're basically going on. And, and this is the part that I don't know how to kind of express to people is the, is the kind of the pro bono employee kind of a thing. Cause it's, it's a weird concept to throw out there to people that I'm asking you to trust. I will take care of you when money is able to come in. But until that time, the work you're doing is kind of of your own. Do you know what I mean? Because I don't have the outside of you, me sending you weed. I have no way of fucking remunerating you for your effort so far. The weed was just a symbolic gesture to show you I'm not that guy to take you for granted. That I'd be willing to do anything and everything I can to make sure you feel valued and you feel uh, uh, adequately, you know, rewarded or, or, or uh, whatever the term is for your time, you know, because I don't want you to get frustrated with me and think, oh, fuck, he's just like all the others, because I'm not like anyone you've ever met. And I would never leave you in the dark. I would never take you for granted, fuck you over, forget, you know, or even not even the unwillingness to learn the inflow matrix. I'm willing to learn. So I put it in my computer and been looking at it and stuff, you know what I mean? Like I'm trying to to understand it and i do now more than i did two years ago that talk we had in the stones remember i don't know what the fuck you're talking about remember that shit it's like i don't want to lie bro but i don't know what the fuck you're on about i love you and shit but now i'm kind of getting it it's actually making fucking sense you know and, and that's it's just my way of showing that yeah i do fully appreciate what you're bringing to the table i see the value in it you know and if other people don't, that's on them. But I fucking do. You know? Thank you. Um, I don't like you, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, it's just like it's a very you're not you're you're not let's say attached to anything because you haven't done it before, mm -hmm. and so. A lot of people they have their own structures or like most people work with boxes right okay, here's finance and here's marketing and here's whatever and it's all different every company has a different structure and that structure dictates how the people are organized mm -hmm. and then every once in a while they reorganize the structure they change things but it's kind of like for you if you want to do multiple businesses and if you want to do multiple like create like a franchise where here's the, the, the here's how we do this and you have a document which you can hand over and go, this is the pieces and the parts. And it goes from a business plan to a living operational manual. And it comes like whatever you're doing is basically at some point a document. Mm -hmm. And everything you're learning right now is the document. Like, how do you get the document in the manner in, that these guys are going to get it? And I know that there's going to be kind of like a, 
normal business you want to do it in a normal business way and then you're going to do it in this way yeah and the cool thing is i have the advantage of having no previous experience with the former square box system yeah. all, the only experience i have so far is your system that's all i know and i'm looking at this shit behind you and i'm like i'm starting to understand i'm starting to fucking get it and i never did elijah before there were times you would talk and I would feel fucking stupid because it seems so simple yet I can't get it. But now I'm starting to get it. I starting to see and by asking you questions and you patiently explaining to me really helps a lot. I know that if we were to influence, if we were to introduce this uh, to some of my bros, they would probably be the same way I was when I first saw it a little overwhelmed, a little like, what the fuck is this? This is not what I'm used to. It's everything's supposed to be boxes and rectangles and, and Venn diagrams and all that kind of shit. You know what I mean? And here's something that's a little different. And so you being able to introduce what you're doing and, and, and introduce it in a way that's easy to understand. I want you to, because you're going to be talking to everyone tonight about this, dumb it down to the point where it literally you're talking, act as if you're talking to like grade four students. Because if, you try to do it like the way we've done it in the past, you'll overwhelm some of the people and they'll get frustrated and they won't listen and they won't understand. And then they'll just, you know what I'm saying? But if you explain it to me the way you did with me, mm. I feel like you kind of changed your presentation a bit with me. And that's what I really appreciate it. So if you dumbed it down, all my bros are super intelligent people. They'll get it. Some of them will get it eat quicker than others. But in the end, as long as they understand what their little part in that wheel in, in, in the system is. But all you got to worry about is your little fucking, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. then me and Elijah worry about the rest. You know, you know that's kind of the mentality here, right? So um, I don't know what everyone's best skill sets are. I know Charles is a writer. And he'll help us filling in some of the blanks on stuff, writing grant proposals. I know that Nathaniel's our guy for technology and infrastructure and that kind of thing. Do you know what I'm saying? And so in that, each person by the end of tonight, since there is nine of us, mm. should be able to roughly have an idea of where they are in this wheel. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah? No? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Because the thing is, like, what, what you're doing, like, what I understand that you want to be in a position where you're setting these up on reserves and they're kind of turnkey running on themselves and you go set up another one, right? Mm -hmm. so, so your business essentially is setting up these programs on reserves mm -hmm. and then you're getting your percentage and the reserve gets a percentage and there's a certain way that it's run mm -hmm. and then you're going on to the next thing. So you personally, mm -hmm. you are looking for your first prototype, prove the concept, and then you can either go for more funding or you got enough funding to do the second one or whatever. I wouldn't just rely on the cash flow from whatever to get your second one going. Yeah, I thought yeah. of that too. I, yeah. I think you should have, you know, the funding in place where as soon as you get one going, every reserve in Canada is going to go, hey, we want one too. And they've already got the money or they can get the money easy. Right. What do you think of doing three right off the hop? Well, I mean, that's when you're doing more than one, you see what one is. Mm -hmm. And if you have enough money, then you can have three contractors and you could actually, because if, if it went well, I mean, really, you can just pop, you know, you've got contractor teams popping across Canada to set these up. Mm -hmm. Because part of like, I was thinking of this today because I was trying to think about my presentation all day. And one of the things I thought about is in my cost structure of the, the 33 degrees, right? The 33 degrees that is involved in, in the money that goes back into the, the, the company, back into the business and the running and upgrading systems. And my wage, your wage, everyone's wage comes out of that 33%. That 33% is immutable because the whole thing is set on everything that's, you know, there's 33% goes to the reserve. So that, that's their reason for even going for this is A, access to food, and B, it's financially viable for them. B, the other 33% is the running of all running costs have to fit within that 33%. The other 33% is the pot. And the reason why the pot is so important, because eventually that pot is going to be taking on more than just opening up more greenhouses. 
but the combined pot of 33 greenhouses putting in 33%, that pot is going to grow really fast. And we'll no longer need to worry so much about greenhouses. Part of that pot can be set aside for education, healthcare, la 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 la, funding other businesses, so on and so forth. The well, reason I did it is, is it's just kind of like if I'm that's of the profit, like 33%, uh, that's 100% of the profit breakdown. So then you have to look at the numbers for your yearly, let's say, revenue. Mm -hmm. And from that, like, let's say it costs $300,000 to run the building, let's say. Mm -hmm. And let's say there's another $200,000 in profit, mm -hmm. like with a 50% kind of thing. Let's say 300,000 and 300,000. Mm -hmm. So you've got 300,000 in costs, you got 100,000 going to the pot, you got 100,000 going to you and your business, you got 100,000 going to the reserve. Mm -hmm. So that could be a good place to start in mm -hmm. a sense of going, okay, well, if three had like, maybe it's not 300, you're gonna find out it's gonna be half, half a million. Mm -hmm. And then it's gonna be, you know, you gotta, like when you make spreadsheets, you're making scenarios, you're going, well, if it's 100,000, then it's this way. And if it's 200,000, it's this way. If it's 300,000, it's this way. And then you're looking at which one of those is the most accurate mm -hmm. in relationship to what is actually coming in. And so did you price out those, like the, the guy that you said they can come in, build the, the vertical house and they just- I, have, I literally sent a couple of emails out. I've got one company back, but they're a theoretical company without any actual proof of anything. Okay. But they got back to me with some kind of thing and, and, and there's a European company, but they never sent me a cost analysis, what, which is what I asked them an estimate for the system installed. So I'm still kind of in the dark and I'm not sure exactly what I'm looking at. I'm and, the, and the other company, like I wouldn't for this type of stuff, yeah. I wouldn't email, I'd phone. Yeah. Start to build a relationship with these guys. And, and, and that's some, I don't, you know, again, I'm going to have to work with someone to kind of get there. Cause I want you to understand. I don't know fucking anything. I'm a guy with an idea. That's it. So coming like I'm looking at myself doing presentations. I'm looking at myself doing fundraising fucking presentations, shit like that. I'm that guy who's bringing in money and going to do presentation and flying to fucking Toronto and flying to, you know, here, there and everywhere to set these up. But when it comes to a lot of the minutia of everything else, I'm not that guy because that's not my strength. Do you know what I mean? Is I can't be the guy who's thinking in financials and, and whatnot i have a rough idea how i'd like to see it work but if that 33 percent doesn't work then we'll find the number that does so that it's relatively close so that the people that i build the fucking business for the reserve is seeing some kind of a dividend for their return rather than just the feel good feeling and some lettuce because indians don't eat lettuce do you know what i'm saying but they sure wouldn't mind checks in their mailbox. The business needs money. I can't just run on old equipment. It needs to be constantly upgraded and, and updated and all that kind of shit. So, so there's a cost. And then if I have inability to put any money aside to start another greenhouse, and all this will ever be is one vertical garden on one reserve with this fucking cost structure that I'm just enslaved to. Because what? here's what I'm trying to get you to understand. You and I are talking circles, but the business world works in squares, especially when it comes to finance and shit, right? And so me with my 33 degree fucking, you know, circle idea, meeting the financial reality of the world and that, okay, well, you don't have any money to put aside into a pot for the next X amount of years. It's literally all the money that you're making goes to running the business and for piecing off the fucking Songhees Reserve. If I trust that, the Songhees will never be fucking satisfied. It will always be up, 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 up. More, 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 more. And I'll never get this off the fucking ground because most of my fucking thing, instead of that pot, will go fucking be diverted over to make the Songhees, who were once getting, say, I don't know, 500 buck check every month. They now want 1,000 bucks check every month. And then two years later, they want 3000 bucks. You know what I'm saying? Three. Hey, hey, James, just wait a second. 
I find that sometimes you're futurizing a lot and you come up with the things that could go wrong or wherever something could go. And that doesn't really help things out so much in terms of you want to understand what the true facts are yeah. and deal from there rather than the maybes. Because the maybes, like each step along the way is based on just facts. Yeah. And the fact is you have to figure out, nobody else, <clears throat> you have to figure out how much it's going to cost to do the big thing. Yeah. And the basics of, okay, if it costs a million dollars and then we're making 200,000 and we're, you know, you have to come up with the numbers in a sense and you have to take ownership of wanting to know the big numbers. Yeah, that's it. I do. Absolutely. So none of your, I don't care about your math problems, your accounting problems or any of your problems in regards to numbers, that this is something that actually is is you should be hungry and, and it, it's, it's like when you get this down pat, you've got your business down pat and all the other stuff can be the details, but this is what you have to figure out. Yeah. You have to figure out the essential costs and the total number of costs and then how much is it going to, to run that building, right? So mm -hmm. the people, you, you got to be, do you know there was this woman in England, she ran a computer company and she knew nothing about computers and she built up this amazing computer company where I think she was like the world's best salesperson. And the reason was because she knew so, so little, she had to ask so many questions. She had to be very humble and she had to figure everything out. Mm. And you're in the same ballpark. Mm. All you have, there's a lot of people out there that want to help you. Yeah. You just got to think that everyone out there has the answers. You just have to ask the right questions. You don't have to know the answers. You just have to ask the right questions. So you should start, you should get a little book and you should start writing out every question that you don't know the answer for to run this business. Oh, wow. And that's so, good. You answering all those questions is going to be how you figure this out. Mm -hmm. And I think that wh whoever is like, you have to really look at, you know, who in the world has the equipment that you need. And these people, they want to sell you that equipment. There are salespeople who will educate you completely on this. And if it isn't these two, there's 10 manufacturers in the world right now, that have what you need to build a vertical farm. Yeah. Those people have salespeople. They're your best friends. Yeah. You got to find out who are the other, if, if, if they're not getting back to you and you should be using your phone. Yeah. You should be using your phone or setting up Zoom meetings and talk to these salespeople and they will download you exactly. And, and I mean, they may come along and go, okay, we've got a turnkey operation, half a million dollars. Some down the road, turnkey 750. Another guy's turnkey you know, whatever it is. And all of a sudden you're going to go, okay, well, it's between, you know, 500 and 750,000 to get this going in terms of just the equipment costs. Yeah. And then they tell me, then they, they'll give you the spreadsheets. Yeah. They'll give you the spreadsheet for the next year. It's going to take three people. It's going to bring in this much and that's how much you got. Mm -hmm. And when you get that number, that's the, your business plan. Cause now you can plan everything from that, but without it, you have no fucking idea of what you're doing. Right. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's what you're missing. All yeah. the other stuff is fucking details, man. And it doesn't matter. Like you got to, you got to think, okay, what's the important information? What are the details? And so you're if right. you were, if what you said, basically like looking at the top 10 companies who offer systems of what I'm looking for, get a hold of them, talk to the people, find what the best options or the top three options are, right? Get an idea of uh, consultants, systems, material costs, all that stuff, rough idea, 7.5 million, just top of my head. Okay. Now I know that it's going to take me that much just for the systems, right? Then I need to be able to go to Songhees with some kind of presentation to get the land in the building. Because if I add the building to the cost of that, we're now up to what, eight, eight, nine million just for the building. The land doesn't cost Songhees fuck all. I don't have to pay for that. That's just them saying, yes, you can have this plot of land and, and access to the, to the infrastructures and power and water, right? Well, they may, I mean, they may want a land cost and may want rent, maybe a way to make some more money for them. And, and that's the thing is, is that, yeah. So that's that I hadn't considered that. I had figured that because I'm feeding their people, they would consider that rent, but I hadn't actually considered that. Because you're not paying anything. And I'm not some white guy on a fucking company. I'm a fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to feed your people. So why would you charge me fucking rent when everyone on the reserve is getting a cut of my business anyways? 
That's per your negotiation, but just don't assume it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Exactly. See what the cost is. Like if you had to rent a building, it costs 2000 a month. But how would I do that if I can't even find out from them without a presentation? Because I need the presentation before I can talk to people about, you know what I'm saying? No, but remember that woman who said she was a friend? You got to think that there's people on the reserve who really want this to happen. Mm -hmm. And I got to go like right away because I got a four o'clock. Yeah. Um, but they're your friends. They're the people you want to have that coffee with before the presentation and go and figure things out. But mm. sush out the territory. Yeah. It's, it's like you want you want to get as much intel as possible. Okay. You're right. Yeah, I, that's exactly. And, and, and just just watch the futurizing and watch the you know the how humans are and your relationships with people and all that. That stuff is all you know gets sorted it's just like me have starting a painting business and i'm going to go hire some painters and i'm going well i mean i don't want to you know i think about all the relations all the problems i have with people in general and it's just like no i'm just getting i'm hiring painters they're mm -hmm. hired to do this job mm -hmm. and they agree to do the job and then we have to figure out the management of that but it's it's very simple mm -hmm. they either can do the job or they can't they're either participating or not it's not like some big you don't have to think about it you just have to make sure that your focus is on the right things right now mm -hmm. and the right things is you figuring out the mechanics of your business not the people side yeah the people side is like it'll come and go and all this but once you've got your mechanics down then you've got your business mm -hmm. yeah that's true okay well i won't keep you up uh, i know you got other stuff to do so okay I'll so i'll see you tonight 6 30. Yeah, and then uh, let's talk again after the meeting and stuff, and just check in with each other and stuff. Because you're you're kind of like my my boy in the ocean right now. So. You're my boy. <laughs> right. Hey, James. You. Yeah.